to. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and welcome to another edition of Minds to Wealth with incredible Ali Shiraki and of course uh, Bradley Chapman. Today we are going to be talking about how important it is to get the right people around you in your life. So let's just set the scene. So I think personally there's been a uh, incredibly a uh, major shift in the way that we view marketing on Facebook, the way that we view marketing on LinkedIn and on YouTube. Now, as many of us will know, we all will know if you're familiar with social media, it's all based around advertising. Everything is based around advertising, no matter what you do now, LinkedIn, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, it's all about advertising. It's all about picking up your interest, uh, uh, your interest uh, based uh, needs and being marketed to. And Ali and me have been talking this week quite heavily about the shift and the change in marketing and how people marketing market to you with these life changing scenarios, which I personally think there's been a massive change. Now, I know Ali feels the same way about this. And I'm like, Ali, with his program, Minds to Wealth, and with his book, he actually really wants something that's congruent, uh, something that's real, something that really can help people. But, you know, we were talking about the people around us. Uh, yesterday, we're going through some book chat chapters and we were talking about how important it is to get people around us and you said let's let's talk about that today getting the right people around you so Ali tell us a little bit about why it's so important to get the right people around you and how that can impact and affect you well uh, uh, thank you for uh, today Bradley but uh, I've been thinking really deeply about this subject last few days as well because uh, my life changed when I started changing the friend around me. You know, I had a life coach and one day, this is the start of it. He called me one day and he said to me, I want you to come to the Simpson restaurant. Now, Simpson restaurant in Birmingham is a very expensive restaurant and only like rich people go there and very famous people go there. And I'm thinking like, why is he inviting me there? Like, it's going to cost a lot of money to go to that restaurant. So I went there and uh, I said, what do you want? He said, we got a meeting today with few important people. Now I'm thinking, you know, who's going to be there? What's going to happen? I'm really panicking. Like, you know, I never met anybody important or anybody like famous or, you know, anybody who's rich or got money or something. Like, I usually meet normal people, you know? So we went inside this restaurant and I know it's going to cost at least four or five hundred pounds when you go in this restaurant. And I'm thinking, is it going to make me to buy something? I'm thinking like, no, don't buy anything. Don't buy no food. Don't order anything. Just sit there, maybe just orange juice or something. And I know even orange juice is like 110 pounder, one glass of orange juice, just because of the class and the name of it. They use that as a filter to not to let normal people come in. They want just different class of people come there, right? So I, I, I went there and suddenly I saw five or six people came in. One of the top lawyers in Birmingham, one of the very close people in the city council person, you know, a judge, you know, very important people, few important people, business people few billionaires, you know, they came there, sit around the table, start talking. Nobody even recognized me or talked to me or like, they completely ignored me. And I'm sitting there, they're talking to each other. I'm thinking like, why am I sitting here? My life coach suddenly, after, you know, half an hour or so, they order food and everything. He nudged me with his elbow and he said to me, Ali, go and make a payment. I said, pay for what? He said, pay for a bill for a table i said you joking with me he said go and pay the table i said this table is at least five grand i haven't got five grand he said just go and pay the table i'm thinking this guy he's just gonna scam me like this you know my wife is gonna kill me you know what's gonna happen anyway i knew him for many years and i know he's very successful as well so i went and i paid the bill when i paid the bill there's a price you have to pay when you want to shift to go to something else this was my price i had to pay as soon as I paid the bill, when I came back, they said, okay, can we call for a bill? And my coach said to me, oh, uh, the bill has been paid. Who paid the bill? Ali paid the bill. Huh? All these people suddenly said, who's Ali? Who paid the bill? Let's go talk to him, right? Each one of them is spending 15, 20 minutes with me, getting to know me, what I'm doing, what business I do, giving me their own personal number. No way you would have find a personal number anywhere. Giving me their personal number to call them and many times, one of the deal I made, like, you know, on a property, 30,000 pounds just, I made profit because he was involved and he made a good deal for me because he knew the contacts. So it's all about who you know and who you're, like, you know, in contact with. And I know I paid 5,000 pounds, but I think that was the best money I paid. And when I came out, my coach said to me, are you really upset? I said, yeah, because I just had to pay this money. 
He said to me, but what did you gain? Instead, your phone only worth 1,000 pounds, but now the contact you have in this phone, it, it worth over 10,000 pounds because the people, the contact you have in there. I, then I realized, why is he talking about? Because it's still I couldn't see no money coming in. But when I went through the problem, trying to buy that property and I faced the problem, then he said to me, call this person. I called that person with one phone call, he solved my problem. He saved me 30,000 pounds. Yeah, absolutely. So it's all about normal people, normal friend around me, normal family member. They couldn't solve that problem. <clears throat> absolutely. So many people. Even around you. And so, so many people struggle with knowing what's good for them and, and having really great people around them, you know, associating in the right circles that can make a major, you know, positive impact in your life. And there's so many times where so many of us get stuck yeah. in the circle. And I've been there where you're attracting, and this is it's down to you actually, what you're attracting, you know, you are what you attract. And <clears throat> You can attract people into your life that really have got a negative influence on your life because there's a negative position inside them and they can really hold you back. And I think it's to do with the way that that you send what message you're sending out, how you act, yeah, how important. you behave yeah. to what you resonate that determines, you know, what you attract. But I think it's fair to say that if we can get the right people in our lives, that you've never you're never going to be short of a number no. or a contact to call to ask. Yeah. For help or advice or to do a deal the yeah. power of your phone book is quite incredible but a lot of people don't feel worthy when they're on a journey of growth they they don't feel worthy and i always remember alfie you know taking me on a, a three-day helicopter trip and we'd been working together for about six months uh, uh before covid and he came up to me and said brad i'm gonna go on a business trip for three days do you want to come i'm taking the helicopter we're going to be doing quite a few drops and visits and I can remember sitting, meeting uh, with uh, some individuals, with Alfie, having dinner with them in a hotel, uh, and they invited me in to come and have dinner with them. And, uh, you know, I was thinking, uh, why is Alfie, you know, at the, at the dinner table? These are his friends, etc. And he said to me, Bradley, I'd rather be a pauper at a king's table than a king at a pauper's table because the pauper will always eat, but the king will always starve. Mm. Now, that's not saying, you know, I'm a pauper. I'm not. But when you're... You, when you're surrounding yourself with a much higher level they of pull you up. They pull you up they will lift you up right but also there's this thing that you don't you sometimes you can feel that you don't belong there but um i do feel that i be, uh, belong there because of the contributions i make and the shifts that i'm making but we've got people watching right now that are going to be at different levels ali we're going to have people watching that they're in moments of doubt, um, you know, um, maybe starting a new business or making an adjustment in their life from COVID. We've got people that are watching that are quite comfortable yeah. where they're at and their circle. And we've got people that are really sort of accelerating and they know the answers to all of this already because they're doing it. Which one should we focus on first of all to help? The ones who's really struggling, the ones that's in the middle, or the ones that's got everything cracked? I, you know, I love this question because uh, this is what I've been thinking about. I've been watching so much videos and, you know, people calling uh, Tony Robin uh, fake and calling that one fake. And listen, listen, we have two type of people. We have hopeful people, which they get on with life. They start doing something. They launch a new business. They go and do something and they give hope to other people like Santa Claus, like Jesus, like, you know, other religious people who they give hope to people and make people to be happy, right? Anybody or anything who gives hope to people or we have dream killers i call them dream killers which they walk around and they just full of nag oh this is not real this is fake this is a spam you know this is not going to work don't launch a business don't don't even get up in the morning why do you want to bother to get up because there's nothing to do there is no hope out there which one do you want to be do you want to listen to that person how do you think your life is going to be when you listen to that person who's telling you not to do anything, don't start anything, don't have no hope, none of this is real, Santa is dead, everybody... How do you feel about that? Is that the life you want to live? Right? You know? i rather to believe Santa, Santa is real because at least I have one hope for Christmas. I'm looking forward to Christmas to, to, to see this guy, even though I haven't seen him ever. Right? You call me a kid? Okay, call me a kid. But I'd rather to live in a life of hope, you know, to see something. I'm, I'm looking forward to something. Launch a business because I want to see that business succeed, right? So now when you are around people who, as soon as you say, I have this dream, 
I want to start this business. They tell you, ah, leave it. You're not going to succeed in it. You know, it's not going to work. It's all a scam. It's not going to really. Do you think you're going to start that business? Do you really think you're going to get anywhere when you have this much uh, stone being thrown at you? No. That's why it's so important. People you have around you, people you're talking to, especially if you want to start a new business, especially if you want to start a new journey. You got to look up to people who they are on that journey. They started that journey and they are doing it. Even, even the most successful and the most wealthiest of people um, in their private time, you know, will turn around and talk to a trusted source to ask their advice and feedback. But there's one thing they've learned, very successful people, is they don't even give time mm. to talk to people that don't understand, that haven't got the yeah. right mindset or haven't had the experience Absolutely. so wealthy people have cracked it you know the ones that are very successful they know the difference between wasting time and energy on someone that really can't understand them can't help them or hasn't been there themselves and i think alfie said to me uh he said why would you why would you want to walk into a pub where everybody's drinking and they think they they they're, they know everything about football <laughs> he said everything he said when people are watching football in the pub they're they're football experts, right? They're, they're football, they're not. <laughs> he yeah, said, put so, them in the pitch, see who, which one of them can play. <laughs> you know. So look, I mean, we were talking about this yesterday. You're going through um, a launch of a new project. You're going through a launch of a new book. And you were saying to me yesterday that, you know, that you want the program uh, to be of value. But you was also concerned, and I get this as well, that people's expectation is really, really high. Yeah. Yeah. Really high. Um, you know, we can't wait, Ali, for your new program, for your new training. You know, everybody's minds have been a little bit fried recently with COVID. Everybody, so many people are looking for a new opportunity, a new change, a new shift. And we've all have dealt with COVID and lockdown, even though we're, we're now open and it's great to see people milling around. It's great to see people in the cars. It's really beautiful. So everybody goes through this stage if they care about their business and they care about their teams and they care about their customers mm -hmm. they are going to care how they deliver and i think also when you're going through something new i think it takes so much courage that many people don't realize what courage and strength yeah. it takes because the other thing we spoke about and this is about having the right people around you so you can talk is people think that you can get rich quick but you can't right impossible it takes a long time Andy, doesn't it it's impossible is literally impossible. I did 15 years of research to everybody, like 50 rich people in the world, right? I read their life story, the, the processes, everything they went through. It's impossible to press a button and become rich. It's a process of seeing yourself in the next 10 years where you want to be and making that journey from today to that day. How long it took you to create those beliefs in your head? You got to reset all this, right? It's going to take the same amount of time. It depends how quick you are, you know, you're ready, how, at what point you are how bad you want it also but it's impossible to be rich overnight because for, you know i met this guy he's a millionaire right i said to him where did you start he said from zero and i said to him how did you start he said i started with reading a book with zig ziglar i said zig ziglar is about mindset it's got nothing to do with business you have a factory he said ali to be able to imagine myself for today i had to learn from zig ziglar sort out my mind then i could imagine where i want to be draw the map where I want to be, how I'm going to get there, and then I start the business. And I was thinking Zig Ziglar is a scam when he came out, right? I didn't even read his book. Now he's one of the mentors. <laughs> <laughs> he's right, because you had to draw the map. You had to know where you are going. You had to draw the vision to see where you want to be, how you want to look like, and then you just draw the map to get there. And that's, if I can share the, uh, the eye model, uh, with you guys, you can see we actually we actually have it in there as well. Here you are. This is the eye model, which is gonna be inside the book, and is exactly the step I took to be able to get to where I am now. Here it says, uh, raise your standard, and inside this raise your standard, it says be hungry, want to achieve something. And then it says environment. You got to sort out your environment. You got to sort out the people around you, your social environment, who's around you, who's saying what to you, right? This is so important to make sure. And again, here it comes to better yourself. We have the mission. You have to sort out your mission. You know, what's your mission? What do you want from life? 
you know and we go through this uh, uh, this model uh, during this uh, did they see the model did i share it or yeah yeah no it came up it's quite small uh, uh, whether people yeah, have it's not in the book anyway so you know they can see there but this is a step literally the step i took to be able to change my mind and i had to block over two and a half thousand people on facebook literally even family members because when i was coming up they kept saying to me no don't go no don't go we can't see after the cloud this, that's the thing as an entrepreneur you gotta see after the cloud everybody just see the cloud but the entrepreneur successful person sees after the cloud yeah and it's very hard to see the after cloud yeah very hard. <clears throat> and do you know do you know where i think and when you don't like, see something badly it's very easy to call it a scam but i think there's a difference between somebody starting a business where they've got like a physical product or service for example somebody might be making um uh, i saw this guy this uh, was a plumber uh, in covid you know and he got locked down and he started making all these hearts out of copper mm -hmm. and that they're now called copper hearts the copper heart plumber and he's got all these decorative hearts that he makes out of plumbing materials it's incredible so where i think people are starting these business where they've got a physical product or service i think this is so beautiful and i think where this whole you know empowerment you know personal trainers wealth gurus and coaches i think that's kind of fallen apart recently because you've got the greats that have been there from for a long time and I think that there's a lot of people that's come through that think, well, actually, you know, I'm going to write a book. I'm, you know, going to become a guru. I'm going to become an expert. And actually, they probably don't have the skills or the qualification or the ability or the desire that really, truly is required to hang on yeah. during that growth period to acquire that knowledge, to learn their product before they can actually physically apply it. And I know that you've gone through over 15 years of learning. Yeah. And this for you, this moment for you, with, with that's what one well. it makes me wonder when a 19 years old, uh, you know, guru suddenly comes out on a YouTube and he start talking about, let me uh, teach you how to sort out your mind. It took me literally 15 years of research to just mm -hmm. learn what it takes to get to this level. And the guy is only 19 years old, dude, just go back to high school, seriously. <laughs> 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 learn your science uh, i don't know or chemistry <laughs> how, do, how do you you know you talked about letting go of people that didn't serve you anymore you know yeah. um there's a moment when you realize actually when you're developing yourself you're moving forward you're raising your standards you know you're meeting new people those people are you know uh, are people that are successful you're associating rubbing shoulders with more successful people which is the way that you move forward and why you connect because you want to be socialized with successful people and then you've got to get let go of a load of people that you know don't serve you anymore for me that's quite easy now because i realize what a waste of time it is spending energy with people that actually just not on the same level where they're negative or they want to pull you down but moving forward into that really good circle of amazing people it's a great feeling right yeah it is a great feeling and yesterday i shared a post on uh, facebook i don't know if you saw it or not i've been a friend with somebody for 15 years and because i love this person uh, and i always wanted to help him i thought he loves me the same way but i realized yesterday he sent me a text message and he was in a very rude manner he says to me he wants to get access to my forex program and he wants to have it for free for example and he said to me, I haven't seen anything from you. Uh, this is your chance. Uh, show me you are worthy of our friendship. I said, I'm tired of showing off to people. You are done. You are in a block list. Done. Do you know why? Last 15 years, I taught him how to become a drive instructor. I paid 4000 for a program. The guy, he followed me. He became a drive instructor. So he didn't pay nothing to become a drive instructor. He literally follows my foot tester. I trained him to pass his test to be a taxi driver. I trained his wife to pass his driving license. He didn't pay none of this. I lent him money to go and sort out the problem he had with his mother-in-law. He didn't pay that money back. And still, he wants me to give. How many times can I prove our friendship? This is a one-sided uh, one -side relationship, isn't it? He's just taking, 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 and not giving nothing. A relationship, a friendship is when Bradley is giving something, I'm giving something. You give something, I give something. We really charge each other. Yeah, you have to be aware of this, who's around you. I literally had to block so many people. And this guy, he just went through the filter every time because, I don't know, somehow he made me feel like guilty to block him. But it wasn't me. It was him. And finally, yesterday, I found the courage. Because of this, what we are doing now, and talking to you, actually, I found the courage. You know what? I'm going to block this guy. I had enough of him. 
and I feel so light. You know, I don't feel him in my shoulder anymore. <laughs> yeah. It's like dead weight. Get rid of, get rid of dead it's weight. Hard. Yeah. It's very hard to get rid of people get, and get say dead weight. People. Sometimes you, know, so you think like you are a nice person, but people think you are a fool. Well, people can take advantage of of a good nature, but let's let's move on slightly in this discussion to, you know, having the right people around you. Um, you and I are at the same stage in new projects that we're both working on. You've got a new project underway um, with uh, with Minds to Wealth uh, and your new book, you know, and make awakening your mental and financial wealth. Uh, and I've got something new going on, which is on our business coaching side. <clears throat> now, you know, I've been a business coach for many many years, but after this call, I've got a phone call with a couple of dear friends, and we're going to be speaking about uh, launching a company together as a partnership alongside Alfie Best. Now, my friends have all gone through this emotion. They're all working in their own businesses. Uh, dear friends, uh, one I've known um, uh, uh, 15 years, one I've known about six friends have become very close friends. I trust their characters and personalities. I love them. And we're going to start a company together. And we all have got some element of doubt and that element of doubt and i said to the guys yesterday we're only going to deal with that element of doubt when we get online and do our call and talk it through yeah and i think by talking it through to collectively as three people collectively we will find the right answer there's many times in business and i've experienced this so have you where you're the ceo of your company and I think the worst thing you can do, and I'm the victim and culprit of this as well, is where you keep and control all your thoughts and all your emotions to yourself without reaching out to someone and saying, actually, look, this is how I feel. I mean, look, Alfie is very tough on me. Alfie's tough love, tough love. You know, there's no, you can imagine growing up in a caravan, a gypsy, you know, if I was to say, Alfie, it's cold. Alfie, I just slapped me around the face. You understand? So there's the right people you can speak to for the right reason. Yeah. Uh, there's no moaning and groaning, but I go to Alfie with constructive business or strategy. He says, book in a time, come in, sit down, we chat. So anything that's sort of based around business that I want to talk to him about, I can. But there are times where it's quite simply, he's just too busy. He's just too busy and running the different companies. So then I can find myself, and, and I think audience might appreciate this, if you, can, if you keep your own thoughts inside yourself, yeah. you sometimes can be your worst enemy. Yeah, yeah. Because then your negative feeling can creep in and all of a sudden you get a little bit down. Yeah. The best thing is to make sure you've got good people around you that when you are experiencing some challenge of your mind, feel comfortable to let it out and say, look, this is how I'm feeling. Talk it through. What do you think? Do you think that's right? Is it Absolutely. important to do that? You know what? Every life coach, every performance coach also has a coach. Like, I have a coach myself, you know. I literally, I was really angry because, uh, you know, last few months uh, uh, it's been going so much like, you know, I... So much money I've been losing because of the wrong contract I've been signing on to. And I'm really angry as well because I'm losing this money, right? Uh, and I wrote a, like a very angry email to this lady. And then she said, hold on, you keep writing this email to me. I'm going to use those and say you're harassing me. So I, I am really angry because I'm losing this much money, right? And they are just taking the money away and they are not delivering the service. So I went to my coach and he said to me, can I ask you something? I want you to write me 11 emails. And tell me what you want to say to her. So I wrote email, like I wrote everything I wanted to say, all my anger, right? Inside those emails. And I sent it. He said, now, can you send me the email number 12 and then say what you want to say to her? There was no anger there anymore. So I literally just write down, this is a receipt. I've made a payment. Uh, I hope this matter is resolved. He said, send this email to her now. He literally saved me because if I would have continued with my anger with that person, I would have caused more problem for myself. <laughs> fire on fire. Can what a good coach does is he puts <laughs> water, he puts water um, on the fire, right? <laughs> he puts water on the fire. We all do that. We all get times where we get frustrated. Everybody. You know, lash out, everybody right? gets, yeah. We all do that. But if you've got the right people around you, it yeah. makes a complete difference. So when you get frustrated, who do you call? When you get frustrated, who do you speak to? Who do you reach out to? I have people. One of them is you. You know, I, I empty myself on you. <laughs> <laughs> we've, got to, we've got to do something, right? It's about moving forward. Right. You, you know, know, I got frustrated this yeah. morning uh, before coming to work. 
And do you know when I normally get really frustrated? It's normally when I'm tired. And I think this is quite an important thing to talk about because if when I'm working long hours or, you know, family, life, children, whatever the case may be, my own stuff going on, if I get tired uh, from, you know, lack of sleep, working hard, yeah. I'm probably the worst person. Yeah. Yeah. I think also it's knowing when to stand back when you're tired to recharge. Yeah. So yeah. you refresh. Otherwise, it's, oh, I'm yeah. tired. Yeah. You get grouchy and you stop yeah. biting at people, right? Yeah, yeah. You well, stop biting. I realized last night, I realized, you know what? If I had two hours of sleep every night. Last night was the night I had to have 12 hours of sleep. Yeah. So I went to bed like 11 o'clock. I refresh. closed the window just to sleep. Yeah, you know? yeah. Oh. absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I did the same thing. The girls uh, picked the girls up from London last night. By the time I got them, I was quite tired. I yeah. think my, my eldest, Molly, wanted to watch a film. Oh, Dad, let's watch a horror film. And I was like, I'm so tired. So actually, I said, I need to lie down and go to sleep. And I think within half an hour of lying down, I think I was I was asleep. The next minute, I think one of my daughters come and put a blanket. I felt a blanket coming over, uh, coming over me. But uh, listen, I think to, to stay focused and to, to get yourself around some incredible people is it's refuel. It's a really positive refuel, you know, just as much as I look forward to speaking with you. And I'm also as well really quietly, um, I'm really quietly uh, willing you on with this program and with this book because I know, and I know that some people don't know, but I do know, I do know exactly what you're going through because I'm going through it too and I know what it takes. I know the strength. I know the courage. I know the challenges. And I know that sometimes we feel that people just don't understand us, but I know how tough it is. And I know that you want to break through. And for me personally, uh, with Minds to Wealth and what this course is going to be for you, I really feel that you've got some really good people around you at the moment, but I'm not sure if you're really aware of just how good they are. And what I mean by that before you think about it is I've got some really great people around me, some really great people. But I don't think yet I fully realise just yeah. how important a part they're going to play in my life yeah. from this part forward. You know, when you're working, 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 you're well, building, you're strategizing, right? You have to step up. You have to go to the next, for example. Why am I? Why do I want to be in a circle of friends, for example? Why? Because this guy has done what I want to do. I am on my way up. I, you know, paid all my debt off. You know, I start to achieve the first level of financial freedom. I want to get to the next level. To be able to get to the next level, Right? I need a new accountant. I need a new tax advisor. I need a new people around me because my old accountant doesn't know how to do my account because he only knows how to tell me to save money. And he literally made me to lose over 80,000 pounds last year in July, which I could have made money. He disappeared because he didn't know what to say to me. Yeah. You know, so <clears throat> going to Alfie, I know I can phone Alfie and say, Alfie, who's your accountant? Can you yeah. tell me who's your accountant so I can speak to your accountant, to your tax advisor? Because you've done this. You managed to get to half a million, you know, or half a billion pounds. Yeah. So tell me which accountant is helping you. Because definitely his accountant is thinking different to me, to mine. But you know, on that with accountants, he uses different accountants for different yeah. things. Yeah, yeah. You know, you've got I people that are specialists that. in park homes, yeah. people that are specialists yeah. in Barbados properties. Yeah, yeah. There are, I didn't you know, know that. Now I have three back yeah. accounts and I, and I have a head tax yeah, yeah. advisor on top of these three. Yeah. Alfie oh, always says you've account. got to go to the specialist. You've got to go to the specialist. And he said that you have to become the specialist. He said that we, you know, we become the specialist in park homes before, you know, we decided to do other businesses because yeah. it was Wildcrest, 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 Wildcrest Parks just yeah. stayed on message, stayed on message. And now there's for room motorhome high there's the football clubs, the mining clubs and Absolutely. golf clubs, etc. Now, and they're all in synergy with, with the and main bitches, so business contact, he's finding more people, right? So when I need help, I'm gonna say, Bradley, can you tell, ask Alfie? You know, who can I contact about this? It's all about who you know. And you know, Alfie says he doesn't invest in businesses; he invests in people. Yeah, yeah. He invests in people. Yeah. Um, you know, we had a guy down a couple of weeks ago that come in uh, and sat in a, a board meeting with Alfie, like a what we call an exploratory, you know, a business consultancy coaching thing. Because uh, we're about to put out now that Alfie is going to be joining um, the boards of about six to 12 companies. Uh, he's putting himself forward as a non-executive director and chairman. Uh, it's about to go live on LinkedIn the next couple of days. So what Alfie's saying now is, look, he said, I want to try and pick about 12 companies. You know, I'll join their board as a non-executive director and I will help them 
to steer their company. I'll, I'll be in there with Alfie alongside him, which I'll do the running around and the background within the companies. But how cool is that? But it's not just about uh, any old company turning up saying, Alfie, can you, can you join our board of directors? We have to meet and see if there's a, the right fit and the right synergy with the people to make sure they've got the right oh, motivation, the right energy. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, we're going to be we're going to be we're going to be wasting time. So, audience, if you're watching right now, this is Ali Shraki and Bradley Chapman. This is Ali's show, which is Minds to Wealth. Uh, just in a couple of weeks' time, now the show will be converting onto Ali's Facebook page, which is at Minds Number Two Wealth. Where please do go and connect and make sure that you're liking the Minds to Wealth page. Ali is currently writing a book, which you can see on screen right now, which is Awakening Your Mental and Financial Wealth. Now, this is taking so much courage and strength uh, from Ali because he's taken 15 years of training, education and personal development. He's taken 11 years since his motorbike accident where he had a, an awakening experience, that, yeah. uh, to, uh, the need to change. Uh, and since the uh, last five, six years, he's been trading successfully and profitably in the foreign exchange world under the School of Trading. And in fact, if you're interested in signing up for one of Ali's Forex training programs, just visit School of Trading or direct message Ali. Ali now. He's an incredible foreign exchange teacher and he's been coached and trained by some world leading greats, including Tony Robbins and many, many more. Richard Bandler. He's educated himself and now he has created, is creating in this next few weeks his own program, his mind to wealth program uh, to help you move your life, your mind, and your wealth forward. And some of you will be joining his mind to wealth course where he'll be helping you to understand your mind uh, untangle your mind sort your mind out make sure you've got the right levels of energy and positivity and he's created an incredible system which is all based around his um his eye rebirth model uh which shows very clearly in a number of steps what it is we have to do today we are talking about getting the right people around us a view at a bad experience where you've had a network of friends and they've kept you down if you had a bad experience where you allowed yourself to remain in a pool of toxic people it's time for you to get up and out it's time for you to engage in positive mindset and attitude moving yourself forward into the new you your new group of friends your new group of business acquaintances because it's in that moment that you decide to shift to move forward that things are really going to start changing on your life but ali they're not going to change instantly are they so it's not a get rich quick scheme how long does it take to become successful within this transition of mind and the way that we think is it overnight or does it take time? Can I ask you one question? How long it took you to be depressed? Uh, yeah, 50 years. Yeah, here you are. So it took you 50 years to mess up your mind. Of course, it's going to take you many years to sort out your mind as well. <laughs> it's a process. It's a progress. We put you in line. We put you on track. And then it's your consistency. And you keep doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it, which is going to give you the result. Same as losing weight, right? People don't lose weight because they go to gym for one week and then they give up. It's true. It's absolutely true. And there's going to be a moment where <clears throat> things are going to get tough, where you're going to doubt yourself, where you're going to think to yourself that actually, you know, I'm not making this work. What do we do at that time? What do we do at that moment when we're doubting ourselves, when it's not quite working? What do we do at that point? How do we get ourselves back on track? To speak to someone? First of all, friends? get in touch to somebody who's been there, like a coach or something. Like if you have somebody, family member who's been there, is done, is fine. They can coach you. If you think they can coach you, let them try, right? Or get in touch with somebody who's professional. I have a life coach. Last 15 years, last 12 years, I've been having a life coach myself, right? Every coach has a coach. Don't even think it's just Ali having a coach. I'm, I'm sure Bradley has a coach. Everybody has a coach. It's impossible to make... Mother Teresa had a coach, you know? All the successful uh, uh, fighters, you know, boxers, every single one of them have a life coach because they have to sort out the way they think. And also remind yourself of why. Why are you here? Why did you start this journey? Because it's very easy to give up. The hardest part is continue going until you see results. And that's why you need somebody to help you to move forward. And I call it somebody grab your ear and pull you. That's what that's what my coach does. <laughs> yeah, it's true, isn't it? You know, even my daughters, you know, I learned so much from my daughters because, you know, they're, they're sitting opposite me in the office. But do you know they never moan? They never, ever moan. That's the skill itself. 
they never moan. Oh, dad, this. Oh, dad, that. You know, we've been through a bit of a challenging time recently, but they never moan. They never, ever moan. And you know, some kids just moan all the time. And there's a strength in that. There's a strength in not moaning, even though they may be feeling it inside. And I look at them some, some days and I think, my God, they're so strong mentally. They might be, you know, dealing with it, internalizing it and thinking about it internally. But that's the thing. Really they have strong. Their, so it's okay to say how they feel and talk about their feeling. But being a mourner 24 7 is not. Oh. Gonna nobody likes a boner no right but it's you okay know. to talk about your feeling short like you know if i'm mourning about something it's okay to mourn about something in a short period but i've got to learn to move on to move forward go to the next level yeah. the bad thing and the danger thing is to live there yeah absolutely and live to be a moment you're never what gonna about, fool anymore. what about inspiration you know um you know when i when i speak to alfie um and i've got a concept or an idea i have to be very careful the way that I deliver it to him because I I have to think it through. And when I go to Alfie, really my job is to really think about every single angle that I can, do you know, before I go to him. And if I go to him and suggest something but I've not fully thought it through, he will always find the one thing that I haven't thought through and he will say, well, what about that? And I'm like, oh, I knew that. I should have thought about that. And That's a good time, thing to have a coach. Somebody yeah, that's in a different angle always keeping me you know on uh on, on on point always and then also humbling me as well you know i got a call the other day from someone and they said uh uh you know we get this all the time you know i've got uh seven hundred thousand pounds to invest and the money's coming through in three months and we'd like you to manage the funds and everything else and you know and when somebody calls you and they've got funds that they're putting across the table you know it's exciting it's nice isn't it but you know only one in ten of those ever really come off because yeah. something's not going to be right and every time i go through to alfie and i talk to him about a potential project he'll always bring me down really to a to a humbling and you know what? It's okay, Brad, the because sense you of you. Get on with everybody you have to understand there are people you can get on with there are people you can't get on with yeah. and the money can't change that it doesn't matter if i bring two billion pounds to the table if me and you we can't get on there's yeah. no point in starting this business. No, because it's like sandpaper. Yeah. It's like sandpaper. It's grating. But I also think, you know, as we as we move forward and we start building partnerships, I think there is a moment when you're going to have sandpaper. That's normal. And like having a soft one is okay. But if you're grinding 24-7 and you're literally having an argument which is like separating you from each other, that's not mm. business. Now, that's like a bad relationship in, yeah. with a wife or a girlfriend or, you know, um, family or bad relationship in business. It's the same thing. It's got a negative impact. But I think everybody, when they start to build relationships, has to have a little bit of sandpaper because oh, yeah. that's, when you, that's when you get to know uh, the find good and bad. Partner, find a business partner. Find a friend is exactly the same as find a wife. Seriously. It's exactly like relationship. You yeah. don't just open the door, go outside, and the first girl you saw, say to them, can you marry me? Right? You have your criteria. You have your checklist. I've got this checklist. Do I see these things in this girl? Now I'm going to ask her to marry me. Right? It takes you 20 years to ask someone to, to marry you. Right? But how can we just open the door and just go and find somebody to, to be our friend when we don't even know who they are and what they are doing? How do you know they have their best interest in your heart? Sometimes your own wife is the obstacle on your progress. You need to understand she's doing that out of love, yeah. but also lack of knowledge. I think I think that gut instinct comes in. I don't know how you feel about this, and if audience is watching, I feel about gut instinct. But when I meet someone or I'm in a certain circumstance, my stomach is always telling me whether it's right or whether it's wrong or it feels good or it doesn't feel my stomach always gives me my just gut instinct tells me whether this could be a decent relationship every time i don't listen to my my my, my, my gut instinct or my stomach <clears throat> it's uh it's painful because the synergy you know isn't aligned listen business isn't personal to a certain degree otherwise if you made everything personal about business you probably wouldn't grow yeah. you know there's some areas of business but but relationships that you can choose and getting the right people around you i think using your gut instinct can really serve you well yeah. that built-in gut compass yeah yeah what do you some think people, some some people they uh, they make a wrong relationship because they are dying to be loved 
Yeah. And uh, the first person comes across, they say, oh my God, this, this is how I felt about this guy 15 years ago. He was my first friend I found here and I didn't want to let him go. I found many people after him, like, you know, they are my friend. But this guy, I didn't want to let him go because he was my first friend I met, right? So I had that special bond with him, but I realized he's just eating me. Yeah. He's not the right person. I had to let go. You know, and you are, you're absolutely, sometimes we make the wrong decision based on we just need somebody to love us. Yeah, you know? agreed. Agreed. And it's agreed. Of love. Agreed. You know, last night I was watching, just as I fell asleep, um, I was watching uh, an American uh, medical uh, series, and it's called uh, New Amsterdam. And it's about this kind of breakthrough hospital in America. And, uh, and it's kind of in real time at the moment. Everybody's come out of COVID, and, and the hospital needs to uh, generate fees. Otherwise, it's going to go bust. And the hospital chief, you know, is trying to interview all the surgeons and get them to talk about, you know, getting people back to the hospital. And they're trying to get people, the doctors and the surgeons, to say, look, it's safe to come back and come back and we'll do, you know, your elective surgeries, et cetera, et cetera. And the doctors didn't feel that. They felt that people were, you know, concerned, worried about coming into hospital, that they could catch COVID, that there is a risk. And because of that, they weren't coming back to hospital for their surgeries. And this lady had cancer and missed three treatments. She ended up dying. Um and the hospital administrators, they were, you know, determined to put out this message, come back, you can trust us. And actually, one of the surgeons, a, a young black surgeon, uh, incredibly talented actress, she uh, actor, she she was saying, look, I, I can't say that. It isn't true mm -hmm. uh, what you want me to say. People are scared. People are worried, you know, about COVID. People now are living in a whole new world of concern. He yeah. said, she said, that's the truth. She said, people are worried. She said, I can't lie to them and tell them, come in and we're going to give you a brilliant procedure and everything's okay. What I'd say to them is, look, yes, we are at risk. We do have COVID. It's here to stay. Yeah. But we can't keep locked in our homes and lose everything that yeah. has to do with life and humanity. Yeah. Of course, we need to carry on with life as best we can, protecting ourselves. And yes, there is risk, but we will do as best as we can with that risk. She said, and that is the yeah, truth. Yeah. Well, honest they, with you. they the honesty, right? And they took that clip of her and they put that out and it went viral. Yeah. It went viral. And the hospital administrator said, you were right, doctors. People want the truth. Well, I believe right now with selling online, with this wealth guru stuff, with anything you're doing, I think people don't want that fake, you know, we're going to change your life. I think they want this next person who's coming, someone who's real. I think Ali Shiraki, he's the man that's going to deliver that. Come on, Ali, if you've got the, the courage to stay true, because you, nobody, could, change, you could change everything, Ali. Nobody has the magic pill nobody can give you a magic pill to change overnight it's a process but you know what i call myself a agent of change i love change and i love to see change in people i do my best from bottom of my heart and with my love to help you to change the way you want but you know what you're only gonna change if you really really want to change it doesn't matter what I do, even it's like a driving instructor, isn't it? Like you are, you are a best driving instructor. You go and train somebody, you give them all your best, you give them all your love, and then they go for a driving test, they fail a driving test, right? You can't guarantee them passing a driving test. And what do they say? They go and say you were the worst driving instructor ever. But then they go to somebody else, they have one lesson, you done all the learning, you done all the teaching. They go to that person, they have one lesson, they go and pass the test because they this time they check the mirror, they pass the test. That person becomes the best driving instructor ever, right? But who's done all the hard work? The first instructor, yeah. you know, even though you think he's the worst person. That's the thing. It's all up to you. It's all down to you. The first thing is we have to stop to blame people, you know, but we have to also find people with a good intention. There are people out there which they don't have good intention, you know? The other day I had somebody came to RST UK start a program for three days. He attended the whole thing. And then he was supposed to tell me at the end of that day. He told me 10 days after. He says, uh, I, I, I want to get the refund because I'm not going to use that information. I was babysitting and I didn't pay attention to your program while you was delivering it. It's not my fault, is it? He's babysitting that time. But you know, I said, you know what? If you are not using I'm going to give you a refund. 
No question asked. I just give him a refund because I don't want his money into my money because my money is a happy money. And I don't want the sad money mixed with my, my happy money. That's what I go for. Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Ali Shraki. And I personally, you know, want to I just, I just can't wait to see Ali develop. And I'll tell you why. Um, many people only ever see the end finished item when someone's successful. Most of us only ever see someone making money and enjoying life at the end. They never see what you've been through, the mind warp, the challenges, the sacrifices, the growth, the determination that many of us have in making that business, our business, a success. It's only the end result people will normally see. Well, I can tell you it's hard work. It's not easy. So can Mr. Ali Shraki. And I wish him every success as he moves forward with his Minds to Wealth program and the launch of his book, uh, which... I think is going to be uh, an absolutely incredibly honest uh, version of what is potentially possible if you don't give up, if, the, if you keep moving forward with absolutely all of your strength, all of your energy, all of your mind. Uh, this is the amazing Minds to Wealth show, which will be going over onto Ali's own Facebook page just in a few weeks at Minds number two wealth. Do connect up with Ali Shrak. He's an incredible guy. Every single week he's showing up, he's learning, he's applying, and he is moving forward. And I can promise you uh, we are all learning something about Ali and his Minds to Wealth program and what he stands for. And in the background, he is cultivating and growing his business, his model, the way that he's going to deliver. And if he wasn't a caring and considerate man, then he wouldn't really care about the way that the program is going to be delivered. He just want to sell it to you that it can change your life. But I can tell you this, he does care about the program and he does care more importantly about you all you need to do is care enough about yourself to take the right amount of action but for now i'm bradley chapman and this is alfie best business and to take us off air is mr ali sharaki did you hear that ali yeah yeah ali's gonna ali's gonna take us off air are we off now? No, you're going to take oh, us off, eh? You're oh, going to say goodbye to everybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, you took us off. Oh, yeah, that's brilliant. Um, here you are, technical, technical fault. <laughs> <laughs> it's the BBC, Sky TV. You're on mute. You're on mute. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, go out there. Be amazing. You can do it. But you have a choice. Who do you want around you? Because who you choose to be around you, that's who you're going to become in the future choose wisely goodbye ladies and gentlemen we'll see you next week at 1 p.m take care bye